basis of that double wing that I started with from the very beginning. And I'll show you. If I'm a double wing team, the biggest thing I have to face is if you give me the defense that Aaron just did, that one right there, that 5-3 defense, what I have to be able to do is I have to be able, oh, somebody's got a question. Let's see here. Oh, Coach Fleming says he's got to run. Thanks. Yep, no problem, Coach. So I can make a down call, which means all three of these guys are going down. Now I can pull both of these guys. That's a word for us, okay? Or if I want to leave base on there, I can do this. If there's a tight end in the game, we can double team on a wrap, on a dart. That play right there is what I just drew on the gun. They're the same play. It's the exact same play. So now, if you line up foot to foot and run that, that's a ton of stuff just mutilating that off tackle gap. And they don't have angles. The only way they can get to you is they can chase it all the way down. But of course, you just lose your quarterback right. The RPO game is the same thing. You can just read it. So if you dig what I just drew there, here's the same version from the gun. Everybody ready? This is gonna be Put your tight end in the game. Put your tail back here. Uh, let's see, how do we want to do it? Let's go here and here and here. That would be rock for us. Coach Alvarado definitely remembers that formation. He ran the piss out of that on him in the first round. I know your coach didn't like that one. Okay, so now <laughs> Let's go, boom, 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 boom. It'll be hard for them to resist. They'll want to go Mike, Will. It's going to be tough. They're probably going to put the nickel right there. They're going to want to cover down. Maybe not. But if they don't, if they put the nickel over there, over here, I'm going to run Buck Sweep over there. If they put him over here, I'm going to run something over here. So it really doesn't matter, okay? But that's back to reading it. Okay, now this is the same play I just drew from the double wing, but watch this. We have a word that means we're reading that guy, and we have a word that means go through there like we're reading you, and we're not reading you. You're superfluous. Well, this guy, this guy, and this guy are now influence. If the nickel was over there, he'd just go tackle him. Okay? <clears throat> and I want to run dart. But now I can run dart and double hitch it. So those guys are automatically out of the ball game. They're probably going to kick all these linebackers back into the box. They're going to get themselves back to a 4-3. But once they get themselves back to a 4-3, I'm going to take my angle. I'm going to double team. I'm going to set that. I'm going to pull through. First thing I can get. I'm going to cut him. It's not going to be hard because this guy, remember, is going to already be out here and re-influencing off of that. Then I'm going to go wrap it. So the linebacker that fell back into the box is going to get knocked out. So I'll pin this one and I'll trap this one. And the quarterback will pull the ball high and run the ball right in between them. And if either one of those guys so much as twitches like they're coming back to the box, he'll throw the hitches on the run. Same play. That's double wing football. Same exact play. Our kids are constantly lied to. <laughs> There's no better way than that. They are constantly brainwashed into believing they are not a double wing team. But essentially, that's a lot of what got us to the playoffs, and that's a lot of what got us through the playoffs because people in Emmett really like lifting weights. Well, maybe not but they don't have the courage to tell me they don't like lifting weights. So they just do it. 
okay? And because we're big and we're strong and we're physical, we can run you over. But we're doing it in ways where it's very, very difficult for you to get your fits figured out and put your people in the right position. Now, you can do this. You could run this tailback through here, bring this guy in orbit motion, pull this guy through the hole, and read this guy. And if he squeezes, pull it, and pitch off one of those if they don't have the numbers right. Now you can play true triple option football out the back door and pull old Pat White off. So there's a thousand ways to do it. And what we're going to do in the coming webinars, and I'll get some tape, and I'll, I'll get Rick to get on that and actually get some, some film of this, because we did it a bunch of different ways. Um, but essentially what this was all about is next year in the double wing, I'm going to have five plays. But those five plays are going to be able to be run out of the eye. But they're going to be able to be run out of the gun. And then I'm going to basically put RPOs with them so that it just becomes this continuous loop of hell if you're a DC of things you have to deal with. And you're going to have to prepare a lot of different answers. So you could just say, screw it, I'm going to blitz. But if you blitz and you guess wrong, you'll get pinned and we'll gash you and we'll be running down the field. If you say, we'll play base, you're catching refrigerators at the bottom of the stairs because you're going to get two pullers in your face and they're going to drive you out of the ball and we're going to get eight yards. Um, I won't be as big or as strong because I graduated a lot of kids, but kids can learn this stuff and it's not hard. The quarterback just has to know where to disseminate the ball. And so all of that is all of that is what we call our rap series. Um, we like to wrap extra people into the run fit so that it's hard for you to get to the ball. And again, I told you I wouldn't bore you, but it all comes from this. I, I took a class one time, read a book about Napoleonic battle theory, and he talked about the goal in winning is concentration of force. I have to get more of mine to your vulnerable point faster than you can get yours to my vulnerable point. If I do, I'm going to win. It's the concentration of force. RPOs are the concentration of force. Um, triple options are the concentration of force. Double wing football is the concentration of force. It's about getting mine to the point of attack. Now, I'll share this with you real quick. You can make this as complicated or as crazy as you want. I'll give you a great one that's a concentration of force that nobody thinks about. How about this one? Isn't that what power read football is? I'm getting one around here, pinning him and reading one. All I've done is plus one it. And we'll do that. So everything you just saw, then we'll come out and we'll run 10 P power read. And you gotta deal with that. But on the next play, I might run four verticals. And I'll show you this before I go. Um, we're gonna add in kind of a new way to throw drop back as well. This is going to be kind of groovy. This will be for another webinar, but um, we're going to do this. This is going to be a lot of fun. We're creating an entire backside menu. It's actually going to change a little bit how we process the drop back game. But let's say you just want to run curl out over here. We're going to have a base rule on the backside. And we kind of stole the idea from the 49ers. It's similar to something the 49ers do in the NFL and something similar to what the uh, Nittany Lions do at Penn State. But basically, your backside receiver just hauls ass. If he can win, he wins. If the middle of the field is closed and it's zone, he's going to try to run a seam. If the middle of the field is open okay, and it's zone, he's going to try to bend it to a post. If he gets man coverage, so in other words, they straight man him. He's going to push vertical and run a corner route. If he gets bail, he's going to set the ball down. So let me go back and I'll I'll clean that up for you. So again, he, he's going to it's going to look like this. And the way we process it out 
is this is middle of the field open. This is middle of the field closed. This is man. And this is if he gets bail coverage. So in other words, they just bail so deep he can't win. But this is what I really love about it. This guy is going to run to a spot five yards like a spot route. And then he's going to cross the formation. And here's what I really, really like. My battery's going to die here in just a minute, guys. So I got to go in a second. He's going to push and he's going to run a box route. In other words, he can go anywhere he wants inside the box. But if on the way to the box, he sees man coverage, he's going to stair step that crossing route. The 49ers make a fortune off this. You see NFL teams run that all the time. The kid will just push. Well, he's not a kid. He's a grown man. But he'll push in, and it'll look like he's running an over route, but it'll look like he's running a crossing. The, the commentators in the NFL screwed up all the time. They're like, oh, it's a crossing route. What it is, we named it this. I don't know what they call it. It's a box route. You push in, you start crossing. If it's man, you push up and back over and you'll leave your guy. If it's zone, you just push over and draw around and find a spot. What happens is how can you interior blitz? You can't interior blitz because if you bring one, so what? I'm checking the protection here. And if there's no blitz, the back is leaking back out into no man's land. So I've controlled all the blitz back here and I've pushed the offensive line over here into the concept. So if this linebacker comes, I got a hat for him. If this one comes, I block him. If neither of them come, I'm literally outnumbering them all. But the quarterback's read progression is really simple. He's going to go concept to read route to box to check down. Concept to read route to box to check down. Why? Think about his eyes. Concept, curl flat. Have I got it? Have I got it? No. Damn. Off of it. Check that deep ball. I already know what route he's running because I should have identified the coverage free snap. So if the middle of the field's open in zone, I know he's running the seam. I can just turn and see, oh, can I nail that seam route? If it's middle of the field open zone, he's pushing right down the pipe. My eyes will come right to him. I can hit him. If it's man, he's taking his guy and trying to go win deep on the corner route. He's getting that guy out of there at least. Natural little run route over here, right? So if it's man and I can't win on the corner, here comes the box route right back into my line of sight where I can try to flick him the ball. If all else fails, check it back into the backside flat. We're going to run a lot of drop back stuff. And here's what I'm going to do. And you guys will see this on another webinar. I'm going to go post out. I'm going to go smash. I'm going to go post wheel. I'm going to go double verts. Whatever concept you want over there. And then I'm going to build this on the backside. And that's going to be a lot of our drop back passing. Now I can look uber complicated with only a few concepts. If I was in trips, this guy would have the read route. This guy would stay on his route, would still check the protection. So I'm really, really excited about that. But that'll be for another webinar. I'm down to like 14% on my battery. So um, coach, I'm running that. This one... What's that, coach? I'm sorry. I'm, I, I run that. I'm, I'm, I have that exact same concept then for this year coming up. The only difference that I don't have is your, your uh, option on the back side, which I'm gonna steal that and that that's just game changer. Oh, that's what I've always liked, always liked parts of run and shoot, but I actually don't like any of the run and shoot because it's too dangerous for me. I don't wanna turn the ball over. <laughs> but my tight end next year is gonna be young. He's only gonna be a sophomore, but he is a freaking 